It's like the cloud provider is saying, you know what? You don't need to worry about servers. Just give me your code and I will run it for you. And we're like, okay, but what about the servers? And they're like, oh, I told you, don't worry about it. We got it. And we're like, what about the network? What about the power? What about the cooling, the security, the patches, the updates, the backups, the scaling, the monitoring, the login, the auditing, the compliance, the privacy, the performance, the cop? You get the point. In the beginning, cloud computing was all about storing files somewhere other than your messy hardware drives. You know, Dropbox was probably the first cloud service you ever used, and it was a game changer. But what began as a way to store data and access computing power has become the backbone supporting our increasingly digital existence. And this evolution signifies more than just technological progress it actually redefines the roles and opportunities for professionals like us, cloud architects, engineers, managers, you name it. How? Well, the emergence of next-gen cloud services will demand new skills, new perspective, new innovative approaches to solving complex problems. And that's where we come in. We're the ones who will shape the future of cloud computing. And it's time to get ahead of the curve because we're not just looking at incremental changes here. We're anticipating a decade brimming with unprecedented cloud innovation. We're talking a world where your coffee machine not only brews an epic dark roast, but also fixes its own glitches before you even roll out of bed. We're talking about a world where your car not only drives itself, but also predicts your next destination based on your calendar. And we're talking about a world where your cloud infrastructure not only stores your data, but also predicts your needs and adapts to your usage patterns in real time. So grab your virtual umbrellas because we're setting the stage for what's coming up in the cloudy realm between 2024 and 2034. In the next decade, cloud infrastructure will become smarter than your average bear. AI-driven cloud services will optimize resource allocation, will predict traffic patterns, and even self-heal in response to potential failures. This means that your cloud environment will be more efficient, more reliable, more secure than even before. Will it? I'm not sure. Um, especially when I look at how we've been using LLMs like ChatGPT to generate text. You know, it's not always reliable. Sometimes it even hallucinates things and it's not always secure. So I'm really not sure about this. We'll almost probably, what I think is we'll almost probably see a shift from declarative to intent-based provisioning. For example, instead of specifying the exact number of servers and their configurations, you'll simply tell your cloud environments your intention, what you want to achieve. You'd say, hey, I want an e-commerce stack capable of handling X amount of transactions per second. You know, you just give your intention and it will figure out the best way to make it happen based on, well, based on your requirements, based on the current state of the cloud and based on countless similar deployments and their outcomes. So what does this mean for us self-proclaimed maestros of the cloud? Well, it means a few things, actually, you know, first thing is we need to level up our understanding of AI and machine learning the same way we had to add containers to our, or serverless to our skill set, right? We need to become familiar with AI concepts, with AI tools. And second, we'll need to adapt and start to think more in terms of outcomes and less in terms of specific configurations. Here's what I'm personally doing. I am going to be putting more effort than before on focusing on the business outcomes of the solution I design rather than just the technical details. I'm also interested in learning more about AI and machine learning limitations and how to work around them. 
So if you have any tips or resources, please share them in the comments. I really appreciate it. AI-driven cloud services will also revolutionize the way we build, the way we manage our applications. You know, we will most certainly see a surge in AI-enhanced cloud services that can automate tasks, you know, uh, that can optimize performance and even, even, even predict your user's behavior. Take healthcare, for instance. The Adoption of AI-powered cloud services it is transforming patient care and research. I want you to imagine a world where predictive analytics can assess health risks in real time and offer personalized treatment plans by analyzing massive data sets instantaneously. Instant. Why do I always pick tough words? <laughs> so this isn't just hypothetical, you know? Institutions are currently leveraging cloud AI to enhance diagnostics and to improve patient outcomes. I even written a piece about it a couple of months ago in my newsletter where I explore how biopharma companies are using AI to accelerate drug discovery and development. It's fascinating. Edge computing will become a cornerstone of cloud infrastructure. The proliferation of IoT devices and the need for real-time data processing will almost certainly drive the demand for edge computing services. This means cloud architects will need to design and manage distributed cloud environments that can handle the unique challenges of edge computing. We're talking intermittent connectivity, we're talking limited resources. This is a whole new ball game, and it's going to be exciting to see how it unfolds. Why? Because the internet, when it was designed, it was not designed for this. You know, the internet, this network that we use every day, every second, every minute, was designed for a world where most of the data processing happens in centralized data centers. It's way cheaper to watch a 4K movie on Netflix today, 2024, than to upload a 1080p blurry home security camera footage to the cloud. Trust me, I know, I have around 50 to 60 connected devices at my house running at any given time, and I'm always looking for ways to leverage new cloud technologies, you know, mainly for alerting and monitoring. So I learned a few things. Um, in 2024, Storage is dirt cheap. It's the cheapest services ever, it's storage. Compute is a commodity. There's a ton of it. There's serverless, there's VMs, there's containers, but data transfer, oh boy, that's where they get you. Ironically, that's why we need edge computing, you know, because it's not just about speed, it's about efficiency, but it's also about cost. As we're moving towards a world where data processing happens at the edge, closer to where it is generated, you know, like in stores or in delivery vehicles, we are witnessing unprecedented efficiency, unprecedented improvements. For example, retailers will be using edge computing to manage inventory through real-time tracking systems that adjust automatically based on purchasing trends analyzed at the source. Every store in the world have cameras. These cameras will be able to pass that footage to an internal, I don't know, machine learning model, and then give recommendations on where to move items on shelves, you know, in real time. But this will require a fundamental shift in how we design, how we manage cloud infrastructure. Will the edge be part of the cloud? I don't know, it's, it's, it's going to be a wild ride. Uh, but if you want to learn more about how to architect for edge computing, or I should say how to start architecting for edge computing, I have a couple of videos on the channel that you might find interesting. So just click here on the pop-up banner to watch them. I think the multi-cloud approach will become the norm and here, we thought that 200 plus AWS services were a lot to keep up with. Brace yourselves, my friends, because we're about to see a world where cloud architects will need to design and manage applications that span across multiple cloud providers. 
This means that we'll need to become experts in multi-cloud integration and interoperability. Interoperability. <laughs> I need to change these words. Just my accent, just my accent. Uh, we'll need to understand how to leverage the unique capabilities of each cloud provider and design applications that can seamlessly operate across different cloud environments. But the thing is, I don't think we will be left alone in this. You know, cloud providers are already investing heavily in tools and services that facilitate multi-cloud integration. You have AWS, for example, that's been uh, offering AWS Outpost, which allows you to run AWS infrastructure on premises. Azure also has its own flavor of this. Uh, I think it's called Azure Arc, which you know basically extends Azure's management and security to any infrastructure. Google, not to be left alone in this race, also has Google Anthos which according to their page, lets you build and manage modern hybrid applications across environments. So what does this mean for us? Well, for starters, I don't think we'll need to become experts in every cloud provider's services, but we will need to understand principles of multi-cloud architecture and how to design applications that can take advantage of the unique capabilities of different cloud providers. I'm personally very excited about this because it means that we'll have more flexibility, we will have more freedom to choose the best services for our applications. Remember, with great powers come great responsibility. I mean, multi-region, multi-cloud, multi-everything, it's gonna be a multi-mess if we don't get it right. You see, one way we solve problems in computer science is just by adding another layer of abstraction. And serverless is the epitome of that. It's like the cloud provider is saying, you know what, you don't need to worry about servers. Just give me your code and I will run it for you. And we're like, okay, but what about the servers? And they're like, oh, I told you, don't worry about it. We got it. And we're like, okay, what about the operating system? And they're like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, we got it. And we're like, okay, what about the network? What about the power? What about the cooling, the security, the patches, the updates, the backups, the scaling, the monitoring, the logging, the auditing, the compliance, the privacy, the performance, the cop. You get the point. Yeah, serverless computing will continue to gain traction and we will see a new wave of serverless services that offer more flexibility, more control, more performance, more X, more serverless services that supports a wider range of workloads. You know, right now we're still very limited, but I believe that in the next few years, we will see serverless supporting machine learning, real-time analytics, and we'll see more tools also that makes it easier to interact with serverless environments, you know, like local emulators and debugging tools. The no-code slash low-code movement will continue to grow. And we will see more cloud services that enable non-developers to build and deploy applications without writing a single line of code. Does this mean fewer jobs for developers, right? This is, this is the main questions on everyone's mind. Well, I don't think so at all. I believe it means that developers will be able to focus on more complex, more high value tasks, while non-developers will be able to build and deploy simple applications on their own. You know, it's, it's a win-win situation for everyone. No code slash low code movement has been trying to gain traction for, for a while now, like 20, 25, maybe 30 years now. And it's been a bit of a hit and miss. But I think the time is now. You know, how we've been trying to build a text-to-speech system that works since, since the 50s. It's mind-boggling that we actually walked on the moon, if you believe we did, um, before we got a text-to-speech that works. But all we had was heavily accented robotic voices. And then we, you know, neural networks came along and now every cloud provider and their neighbor has a text-to-speech service that sounds just like a human. I think it's the same thing with no-code, low-code. We finally have the right tools and the right infrastructure to catch up with the vision. So is that all? Well, 
Obviously, no. Quantum computing as a service will be a thing. Um, immersive experience platforms for AR, VR, MR will become the new norm. And we'll also see more cloud services that focus on sustainability and environmental impact. But I think I've talked enough for today and I don't know nearly enough about quantum computing to talk about it, so I'll leave that to experts. But I haven't been this excited about the future of cloud computing since I first heard about it, and I can't wait to see what next decade has in store for us. My name is Elias, and I'm a cloud solutions architect, and I'll see you in the future. Peace out.